You are listening to the Disney Dream Girls, an unofficial Disney theme parks podcast, and this is show number 311 for Sunday the 19th of April 2020. Where dreams begin. Well, hello and welcome to this week's Disney Dream Girls podcast, and I have with me the lovely Jane Phipps. Hello there, Jane. Hello there, darling. How are you doing, my lovely? Enjoying the sunshine. It is absolutely delightful <laughs> it's nice to have some sunny weather yeah i might even get a tan this year who knows <laughs> oh, our milky white skin will have a sudden golden <laughs> glow from all this isolation and sitting in our gardens yeah definitely well we have with us a very special guest a former guest on the show the wonderful mr keeping it creepy james h carter <laughs> Hello, hello. Yes, uh, I don't know. I don't even know what number uh, time this is for me. This has to be at least four or five, I would think, right? It is, and it's always a delight to have you on the show. Oh, thank you. Always a pleasure to be on the show. Jane, would you like to introduce yes. the challenge we have set for James? Oh, crikey! Here we go. I- I'm going to get the rules wrong here, aren't I, Michelle? You're going to correct me if I do it wrong. <laughs> no. <laughs> No. <laughs> go on, go ahead with it. We're creating a new park that can be made up of 10 attractions. They can be existing attractions. They can be old ones that are no more. They can be new ones that we've yet to see. They could be an entertainment that don't have to necessarily be a ride or such. But it is creating your own special, unique, Disney-themed park. Did I get it right, Michelle? Yeah, that sounds brilliant. (laughs) (laughs) So basically, we're just going to sit back and just give the odd critique on everything you come up with, James. And I think between the two of us... Oh, boy. We're just going to see how creepy you can make your Disney theme park. Wow, what a challenge you bestowed (laughs) before me. (laughs) But I'm so excited to to share this list with, with everybody. Uh, I will say that uh, the challenge of making this list was not coming up with enough things to put in my new theme park, but it was to narrow it down to 10. (laughs) That was the hardest part. (laughs) I think when I first made my list, it was at 23. So I had to get rid of more than half. Wow. So uh, lots of honorable mentions. (laughs) (laughs) And the fact that you could use uh, attractions that no longer exist made it even harder. Oh, I know, but amazing heritage from Disneyland and even past Walt Disney World attractions. So come on, James, let's hand the baton over to you and what you're kicking off with. All right. I will say this. I don't know if this is against the rules or not. I I had to do this. Maybe I'll just get one pass on this. Is I had to combine several attractions into one. (laughs) 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 And let me explain. (laughs) So in, in in my new park, There's going to be kind of like a a complex and there's going to be not only, of course, will there be the Haunted Mansion, there will also be Phantom Manor and Mystic Manor all right next to each other. It'll be the (laughs) the Haunted Complex. I'm going to say it's one experience that... Does that does that break the rules to, to combine those three things into one experience? I'm liking you having a trio of mansions. I, th- I think we could go with that. Don't you agree, Jen? I'm I'm loving this idea, James. I, I quite like the fact that you're being a rebel and breaking the rules. I like this. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, there's no way that I'm going to take up all those slots out of my tent. Because, <laughs> of course, all of them are must-haves in, in the parks. And not only to make it to make it complete, the Haunted Mansion section will have Museum of the Weird, which was never, which was a plan, but never existed as the beginning of the Haunted Mansion. So this will be the ultimate haunted mansion complex on in any disney park right off the gate that's that's our star attraction could i just maybe add an idea to this okay maybe during that particular time of year it could become halloween town yeah i I don't have a problem with that i i I didn't want to include uh haunted mansion holiday as a separate attraction i assumed that they would be an overlay (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so we can just make the whole area Halloween Town during that time. There's the overlay. I, that's totally fine. I like that. Oh, I want that now. I, I, I really like the sound of that. <laughs> and it gets us on Mystic Manor without having to go overseas. Yeah. Well, we class America as overseas, but you know what I mean. Yeah, definitely. Yep. 
I forgot to ask, where is this part going to be? Did we decide where, where, where it's going to open? I didn't know. James, if you want, love it can be in your back garden. I don't really care. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I live six miles from Disneyland, so we're going to give Disneyland a real run for its money with this lineup. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's in my backyard. All right. So we're going to start off with that one. <laughs> the next one on my list here, you know, I love classic dark rides. And I, I would love to include all the classic Fantasyland dark rides, but I only had 10 slots. So I had to include the best Fantasyland dark ride. And that, of course, is Snow White's Scary Adventures. <laughs> had to have that. You get an extra bonus, Max, for including my favorite attraction. I figured you had a, li- uh, a liking to it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's it's obviously gone in in uh, Magic Kingdom. It's, it's still in Disneyland Paris, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and, and they're in the middle of uh, revamping it uh, here in Disneyland and really worried about what they were planning to do to it. Hopefully it still remains as super creepy and scary as it was before because they've been really vague on the details there. But and who knows what's going on now, now that the construction is shut down. Mm-hmm. But I want it to be the elements of the Disneyland one, the old Magic Kingdom one. I just... Just as creepy and disturbing as it could possibly be. <laughs> the classic <laughs> Snow White Scary Adventures. We're going to take Scary Adventures out of the title because it's scary. But I liked I liked it when it originally opened when, you know, it was misleading. And you thought it was just going to be a nice little uh, stroll through, uh, you know, the dwarves' cottage. What do you think they could do to make it even spookier then? Hmm. Uh, I think we're, we're just going to cut out the dwarves' cottage part, I guess. So they will just have more time in the dungeon and through the spooky forest. <laughs> I'd love a sound effect of the uh, old hag cackling away and maybe doing mm. a bit of the um, evil queen with a bit of an incantation bit going on. Yeah, a lot more pitch blackness too. I think the original one had a lot more moments in like complete darkness before they uh, lightened it up. So we're going to bring it back to its original terrifying state and have a good time with it, you know, and just keep keep the original scary adventure going. Loving it. And I, I didn't realize we didn't name the park. I guess we're going to call this Disneyland James. <laughs> <laughs> in Disneyland James, we're going to, there'll be no sign of, of jolliness in this ride. <laughs> I believe no, there's uh, there'll be a few other dark rides show up on this one, but uh, you know I, when I want it when I was coming with the list, of course I want to do Mr. Toad and Pinocchio's Daring Journey. Like those are such great creepy <laughs> attractions, but Snow White, you got, you got, I had to pick one to represent that type of and that era of ride, and I went with that one. No, I love it. Excellent. So the next one on my list is an attraction that I unfortunately never got to experience. I've relived it in explicit detail through people's firsthand experiences. Uh, watching videos and reading as much as I can about it. But that would be the extra terrestrial alien encounter <laughs> that was at Magic Kingdom. Have you guys ever got to experience this attraction? Nope, I haven't. Yeah. Yeah, it was a real real short window in time that it was open there uh, in, in Magic Kingdom. And, and for people that are, are unfamiliar, it was the attraction that Stitch's Great Escape mm-hmm. was. Uh, and they essentially took the same concept in the... Uh, lightened it up quote unquote with stitch but uh from all accounts this was one of the most terrifying attractions that has ever been in any disney park uh, you really felt that an alien was uh going to kill you you had alien drool on you you saw people being dismembered like it's i just still can't believe that this actually was in the magic kingdom uh it scarred many children it sounds really scary yeah. yeah, yeah. Look, yeah, anyone that doesn't know about it, look look all about it. It was supposed to be based on, um, you know, Alien from the, you know, from the Aliens film with Sigourney mm-hmm. Weaver, which eventually ended up in the great movie ride. Uh, but that was the original premise. So it's, it's that, that's the kind of alien that's in this attraction. It is completely terrifying. I don't think you'll ever see anything like that in a, in a Disney theme park ever again, except in mine, because we're bringing it back. <laughs> Good for you, James. <laughs> yeah, because I have I just remain back just so that I at least I can experience it just once because I never got to. You know, unfortunately, I did experience Stitch's Great Escape and any attraction where burping hot dog breath in your face happens is an automatic fail for me. <laughs> so, which I guess it's just sitting there closed now. They haven't officially announced that it's closed, but I don't really know what's going on with that space. Mm. <laughs> 
It just seems to be a meet and greet area or it's utilised during Mickey's Not So Scary for a candy run. Oh, uh, okay. Well, it's probably better use than what was going on there. <laughs> but that's just yeah. my opinion. All right, so my next one here is something that I'm assuming most people have never heard of. I didn't hear of this until um, a year or so ago. But this is an attraction that used to be in uh, Tokyo Disneyland. And it's called the Cinderella Castle Mystery Tour. Ooh. Have you guys ever heard of this? No. No, I haven't. No. Essentially what this was, this was a, a walkthrough attraction that opened in uh, July 1986 and closed in April of 2006. And essentially it's a walkthrough attraction where you encounter all the Disney villains. Wow. Including the Horned King from the Black Cauldron. Not a very popular Disney villain, and it's the only attraction where the Horn King from the Black Cauldron was ever in. That sounds great. Yeah, it's uh, even Chernabog shows up in this from, from Fantasia. I mean, this actually seems scarier than uh, Alien Encounter, just for the fact that, you know, you're not on a ride, you have no kind of protection, you have to go through this, almost like a haunted house. Mm-hmm. Mm. There's a lot to this that I could probably do a whole uh, episode on it, so I won't get that into it. But, but some of the villains you encounter are uh, Lady Tremaine from Cinderella, Stromboli, Maleficent, and, of course, the Horn King, like I mentioned. So we definitely need this back. I would love <laughs> I would love, I would love for this to be in any Disney park. I'd have, I would have loved to be able to experience this. It's really cool. Was this actually set in a castle then, or was it just a big show building? It was uh, underneath Castle uh, in Tokyo Disneyland, yeah. Wow, and was it like a, a walkthrough, or were you sat in a vehicle? Yeah, it's a walkthrough. It essentially takes the space where uh, where Terry Harden's dragon is in Disneyland Paris. Instead of that, it's a walkthrough oh. of uh, encountering villains. Oh, I'm going to YouTube to go and Google this. Yeah, definitely check this out on YouTube. There's also a really uh, fun episode that explains it in detail on defunct land that youtube channel oh, yeah. they have yeah they have a whole episode about this that's actually how i found out about it to be honest i never even heard of it until i saw that and i was like wow this is really cool so when you when you when you said i could do uh retired attractions this was one of the first things <laughs> that i thought of that sounds really cool yeah yeah, yeah definitely yeah, i'll send you the link if you can't find it yeah but unfortunately it's gone Aww. but it's back now in disneyland james <laughs> <laughs> Again, real misleading title. It sounds very uh, lighthearted. Cinderella Castle Mystery Tour. <laughs> but not like, uh, it should have been called Escape the Dungeon or something. Because <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what it is. <laughs> I think it terrified a lot of uh, mis- mis- uh, misled guests as well there. It's probably why it closed. Sounds great. Addition to Disneyland James, the creepiest park in the universe. <laughs> in the universe? Wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, uh, moving right along, <laughs> number five, I don't have too many thrill rides in my park just because um, the thrill ride experience is not necessarily my favorite. I'm more into the theming aspect of it. Mm-hmm. You can do thrill rides at so many different parks that are non-Disney. But I had to include what I think is probably the best Disney thrill ride that is currently operating, and that, of course, is Expedition Everest. <laughs> And mine will have a working Yeti. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm sad to say I have never experienced Expedition Everest with a working Yeti. I've only experienced Disco Yeti. And I can only imagine how terrifying it would be to have a, an animatronic of that huge reach out and try to grab you. It's, it's, it's still terrifying in Disco mode, but the fact that that thing moved at one point <laughs> is insane. Have you guys experienced non-disco Yeti? No. I actually rode Expedition Everest and I was that scared. I didn't actually see the Yeti. Oh, you kept your eyes closed. The time. I was, yeah. We know me and Thrill Rise, we don't really mix very well. And I was just glad that I got on it and got off it again. <laughs> <laughs> so you missed all Yetis. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bless you, Jen. I had everybody telling me it was there, and I'm going, oh, but I didn't see it. I really, I thought my eyes were open. They probably weren't. So that's another Ron Jane's to do list then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with eyes open. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's definitely a blink and you miss it moment. It's real fast. So I, I could, if your eyes are closed, you could, <laughs> you could miss that whole part. <laughs> But uh, as far as just the ride portion of it as well, uh, I think it's probably it's it's just 
the most fun. It's so it's a smooth roller coaster ride. It's not too intense, depending on I guess your tolerance. <laughs> but um, and I, I love the dark ride elements of it as well. I love you go to a dead end track and then go backwards and all that kind of stuff. That climb up at the beginning is, is pretty uh, pretty scary too. You feel like you could just fall right out the side <laughs> when you're going up that lift hill. No, I agree, and especially when you get to the run out of track element as well. Yeah, yeah, that's that's so much fun. <laughs> that's one of the things that I think everybody knows is on the ride uh, before they go on it because they put in all the advertising. But it'd be funny if you didn't know that the first time and you really was like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> the track has ended. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> going backwards uh, except that in, uh, in my version you actually go off the track and then you land and the yeti catches you it's a new technology <laughs> <that we're working. laughs> definitely not riding that one though. <laughs> yeah it's gonna take a little few years to get that technology down and get it, <laughs> get it safe but we're working on it <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't send, set you a financial budget, did I? I just said it, it needed to be 10 attractions. You did not. <laughs> <laughs> you did not. So you need to refine the rules, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> the sky's the limit with the budget over here in <laughs> Disneyland, James. <laughs> so I guess now moving on to number six. Uh, this is an attraction. I think it's the only one in the category on the list that was never built. Ooh. It was supposed to have come but it never existed because it was supposed to be in a land that was never built. And that land was called Beastly Kingdom, and it was supposed to be an animal kingdom. And they never built it. And it's in a space now where uh, Pandora, the world of Avatar, is. So now we know it's never coming because, <laughs> because that land has been occupied. If you're not familiar with what Beastly Kingdom was supposed to be, it was supposed to be the land of an animal kingdom of mythical animals. And it was going to be split down the middle between uh, good and evil, I guess. There was going to be um, the good side, good creatures. Was The main attraction was going to be called the Quest for the Unicorn. It was going to have those type of attractions. And then the evil side was going to be all, you know, just dragons and big creatures like that. And so one of the attractions that was going to be on the evil side was called Dragon Tower. And it was going to be a roller coaster type ride that goes through a dragon's den and there was supposed to be a animatronic of a dragon trying to attack you the same size as uh the yeti ended up being they essentially took that concept and put it into expedition everest which you know didn't open with the park so opened a few years later so they that whole idea of encountering a larger life creature came from this attraction there's concept art for it uh online and Beast, the whole Beastly Kingdom sounded absolutely incredible, and it's so sad that they never built it. There's traces of Beastly Kingdom uh, throughout Animal Kingdom. Still now, there's the unicorn parking lot. You'll see a dragon on the on the sign. Uh, so they were supposed they were supposed to be coming, but it got canceled. And that's that's the saddest part about this. But we're bringing it back to the original state, <laughs> even though they never built it. Um, so some of the Imagineers that developed this got laid off shortly after. Animal Kingdom opened, and they got hired by uh, Universal Creative, and they ended up taking most of this concept into the Dueling Dragons attraction that oh. used to be in Islands of Adventure. No dark ride elements, but uh, it was just two roller coasters that were pretty much, you know, almost missing each other. And that ride got transformed into Dragon Challenge when they opened it to uh, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, and now that ride is completely gone, and now. It doesn't exist at all, <laughs> so there's no no remnants of it. That was quite an intense roller coaster, though, because I used to love riding that at Universal. Yeah, so that imagine that, but with a large dragon animatronic <laughs> coming at you. <laughs> wow, that would have been that would have been something else to say the least. And the show building, I couldn't even imagine how how incredible that would be. Would you have it as a dark roller coaster, or would you have it in the open? Uh, I believe it was mostly indoors. So, you know, a little rock and roller coaster style, but instead of driving through L.A., I guess is the point of what you're doing there, you're going to a, a dragon den. Wow. I'm writing up the GoFundMe to create this amazing theme park of Disneyland James because so far, everything on there is ticking my box. It's something amazing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. Well, thank you. 
but yeah, that's that would be a dream come true for me too if we could get this guy. <laughs> If, if I had the skills to do this, which I don't, I know a lot of people have created um, like virtual uh, ride throughs of attractions that have closed down in, in like uh, computer animation. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be fun to see one for this. I would do a GoFundMe to get someone to make that because I would love to see that, you know, just at least a, a video uh, uh, ride through just to have mm-hmm. that experience, let alone get to do it. Sounds great. Uh, Pandora as a land is okay. Flight of passage is really awesome attraction. I, I, I enjoy it, but if I had to choose between Pandora or beastly kingdom, I, beastly kingdom would win by a landslide. <laughs> so very sad. They never built it, Aww. but so maybe eventually they'll take away the dragon off the sign and stop teasing us every time we enter the park. <laughs> <laughs> what are you feeling Jen, about this with having two thrill rides? Well, you know, I don't, I don't mind the odd thrill ride. You know, I, I will tolerate them. I prefer the dark rides, but no, I'm loving this so far. And I, I mean, I've not got to see Pandora, so I can't really comment, but I absolutely love the idea of having a Beastly Kingdom. I thought that was a nice way to go to give a little bit of distraction from the rest being very animally based and very nature based. <laughs> so um, I'm kind of gutted that they never went down the Beastly Kingdom route. I would have loved that, but, you know. So yeah, Dragon's Tower. I'm, I am intrigued, and I think the idea of having a um, seeing if somebody could mock up a VR sort of playthrough would be. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. If only I knew somebody that worked in the games industry that I could mention that to. I might have to do that, shall I? Might now. Yep, let's get him on the case. All right, let's get that GoFundMe going. <laughs> <laughs> He's, 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 he's never got things to do. He wouldn't mind doing something like that. Yeah, I'm sure everyone's schedule is wide open to do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but we're having a good time podcasting. So, <laughs> yeah. So moving on here, I'm sure uh, you, uh, you guys probably guessed this attraction was going to be here. So it's not going to be much of a surprise, but can't have my part without it. And we are talking about the Hollywood Studios version of the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Um, I, I had to specify the Hollywood Studios version because it is the only one with the fifth dimension very important (laughs) part of the attraction (laughs) have either of you experienced that tower terror at dca before it uh it closed down yes have you jen not dca Uh, well you know what the answer to this question is michelle why am i even asking you because you've not even done it in walt disney world the best one oh i didn't even know that i didn't even know that wow jane (laughs) No, I thought um, you would leave yeah. All once. right, okay. <laughs> she's not done it in Paris. She's not done it in Walt Disney World. She didn't do it in Disneyland, California Adventure. So, yeah, I've done it in the three different incarnations. So I've done Paris, I've done California, I've done Walt Disney World. And I'm in complete agreement with you, James, that Hollywood Studios is the best incarnation. By far. Uh, for many, remember, that the fifth dimension is such an incredible uh, part of the ride especially the first time you go on on the attraction. You're, you're just, it's so unexpected. Mm. <laughs> um, and I won't ruin what that is for you, Jane, for when you finally get out there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the one reason that I really dislike DCAs is that when you get off the attraction, uh, the exit was like a unthemed hallway. Mm. It looked like uh, going from the doctor's office or something. I was like, what is this? What is this hallway here? Uh, I don't know. They just kind of gave up then. But I will include one element that was in the DCA version, which is, you know is long gone now. Which is that in that hallway, around if you went around the corner or you took or you got one of the exit, there was like a bunch of luggage underneath some stairs. And if you looked really closely, there was uh, a a uh, like a foot hanging out from underneath this stuff, as though it looked like there was some kind of like dead body. <laughs> <laughs> It was a real Easter egg uh, if you uh, if you know where to look for it. Uh, I don't I don't believe that dead body is in the Hollywood Studios version, so we're gonna bring that into mine. Find the dead body in the queue <laughs> element. So it's the ultimate Tower of Terror, fifth dimension and the dead body. So <laughs> it's even, it was really even hard to get a photograph of it because it was behind a chain link fence, and it's just hard to get a picture through a fence, you know, to focus on the right thing. So it's very hard to document, and um, only people that saw it in person, I guess, knew what I was talking about. But yeah, I do indeed. Now it's gone. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I think it was only in the DCA version that the queue they had the uh, 
the voice of a of a ghost of a little girl. I don't think that's in the Hollywood version, uh, Hollywood Studios version either. So yeah, let's, we'll throw that in there as well. It's gonna have all the best elements, actually. So I've experienced it myself. But uh, someone from our our podcast, Grant, who has traveled to all the Disney parks around the world, he said the Tower of Terror and Disneyland Tokyo is not themed to the Twilight Zone. It's a combined story to what uh, Mystic Manor in Hong Kong Disneyland. Mm-hmm. We'll throw all that stuff in there too. So this is will be the ultimate, the ultimate Tower of Terror. Perfect. All right, so we have three left. <gasps> du, du, du. <laughs> and the next one is Disneyland's Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> I just, of course, I just specified Disneyland's, of course, because <laughs> I really wanted to uh, include Shanghai Disneyland's Pirates attraction, which is supposedly a uh, real next level. <laughs> I haven't watched right through videos. I've been trying to avoid them because I hope one day I get to experience it. I had a hard time uh, including attractions that are currently operating that I haven't experienced yet. <laughs> so I, I couldn't in good conscience add it there. So I had to have some type of pirates representation here. And the other operating pirates is, of course, the, uh, you know, the end of the Disneyland's attraction, you know, going through the pirate village and all that stuff. But I, I really love the beginning of Disneyland's pirates. I really love the slow buildup of going through everything's abandoned and there's just skeletons everywhere and of course there's the you know the easter egg that there's a real human skull in the uh in the bed and in, in the treasure palace or not a, whatever you want to call that area i love the uh the portrait that mark davis did the portrait of things to come of the uh the female pirate with the red hair i love all that stuff so i had to make sure that that was included in my pirates and in fact i would even make that part of the ride even longer <laughs> with more <laughs> abandoned creepy stuff before we get to the uh the main event because that's actually my favorite part of the ride and it's your disneyland park disneyland james so you can make it as wonderful and as amazing as you wish thank you if, if, in that case I actually, at the end of my attraction, I want the portrait to come to life. Oh. <laughs> I want that whole scene in the portrait with the red-headed pirate, <laughs> fighter lady pirate to, uh, I have a whole conspiracy theory that the, that portrait is actually, you know, Red, who has recently been liberated to, uh, pack heat. <laughs> she's, she's no longer for auction. She's now, uh, packing a gun, ready to, you know, a very controversial topic, I know. But um, even before she got her gun, I like to pretend that that was her. And the reason that she's smiling is that in the end, she's going to kill all the other pirates and she's going to have all the riches. That That's what the portrait was saying, that uh, a portrait of things to come is that she's going to win in the end. And I guess in a way she did, because now, now she's no longer for auction. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and we will fully support Disney girl power for you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I know a lot of people had a problem with them changing what was classic, but uh, Walt always said it's not a museum, so <laughs> things need to evolve. <laughs> if, if people like to quote Walt a lot to to back up their points, and I, I always go to that one <laughs> and say Walt said this is not a museum. <laughs> Disneyland will never be done as long as there's imagination in the world or something like that. I think that was the quote. <laughs> so. Yeah, perfect. Now we have, I guess you can call Pirates a Dark Ride, uh, but as far as the classic style, it's not, it's not the classic style. When you're in a dark attraction like that, though, you know, there is that element of the unknown. And when you go down the dips as well, you know, you just don't know what's happening. Right. Yeah, you, especially you're going in complete darkness. Like your first time experiencing Disneyland Pirates, especially if you're only used to Walt Disney World one, it's so such a jarring beginning mm. <laughs> that you're like wait a minute i thought i knew this attraction mm. <laughs> what is happening here two left james two left all right so i had to include some representation of my favorite disney film a lot of people don't know what it is i don't know if you guys know what it is i uh, have a guess Ooh, i don't know <laughs> no my favorite disney film is Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Oh, I should so I have known that one. <laughs> I should have known it. I'm very obsessed with that film and everything about it. <laughs> and uh, the current Disney company likes to pretend that it didn't happen. They try to sweep it under the rug. They hate Jessica Rabbit. She's not family friendly. <laughs> 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 But 
but it's not her fault. She was just drawn that way. She's a very nice person. Give her a break. Yeah. <laughs> All that being said, <laughs> I had to include Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin. Now, I wanted to include the entire Roger Rabbit land that was supposed to be in Hollywood Studios, which has three other attractions that were supposed to be built that were never done. That really breaks my heart that never happened. But I felt that was taking the cheating too far with my haunted mansion complex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think we've, we've let you go with that one, but a whole land, I, I think we'll call it a day on the one attraction. All right. Yeah. So I, I will, I will accept that. And as long as we just keep everything as is, I, I love this attraction. I love the queue because it's, a, it's such a great recreation of moments from, from the movie i mean it is a very low slow loading attraction mm. so uh it's it's when you're in that queue you're really in it <laughs> you're in there for a while i love to be able to walk the back alleys of toontown of the toontown for the movie not the uh colorful fun toontown that is uh you know in you know outside of the attraction yeah. in disneyland <sighs> Uh, if anything, I would just add more Jessica Rabbit to the attraction because she's barely in it. She has a few, mo- she has a few cameos, <laughs> but we put more, uh, more of her in there, and that's it. It's your attraction. If you want more Jessica Rabbit, you can have her. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm curious, Jane. Are you going to have a, a quick guess? What do you think James's last attraction could be? Well, that was thrown by the Roger Rabbit, so I've got no hope of, get- of guessing. <laughs> Which, by the way, I love. I love Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I have great memories of going to see it at the cinema when it came out originally. I'm, I'm all for that. I have no problem with that at all. We well, see, yeah, but we've got the Tower Show. We've got the the Haunted Mansions. I'm going to struggle to guess. Are you, have you got a thought? I'm thinking he's got to have Splash Mountain. He's got to have Splash Mountain, but just because I know he loves that creepy element as, as you're going up the lift hill for the big drop. So I'm, I've got all cross for that one, and I think it'd round this park off lovely. But shall we see what he says? <laughs> Go on, then. <laughs> no pressure. No, no, no. I'll, I'll say this. Splash Mountain didn't make a list. I do love that part of the attraction, but I think the cheerfulness of the most of it kind of outshines <laughs> it, making my list. <laughs> but I, I do, I do love the, the descent up the hill with the creepy music and the vultures taunting you. If, if, that, if it was just that the whole ride, yeah, I, then it might have made it on the list. But I have thirteen ones I had to cut from this list, wow. so you guys, it'd be a real, real hard one to guess. But I'm just gonna lay it out here. And I will say that this attraction is the newest attraction to open in a Disney theme park. And it is the last one that I experienced myself before lockdown. And it was that good that it made it into my park. And that is Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. Oh. It has to have it. There is no other theme park experience like that that I've ever had. <laughs> that was a wild thing. I'm assuming that you guys have a chance to go on yet. So I don't no. want to spoil anything about it for when the, you do get to experience it. But all I can say, and I, I assume most people do haven't got a chance to ride it yet because it's been only been open for a few months and then the parks are now been closed. There is not a comparison attraction in any park <laughs> besides the fact that you're just like, oh, I'm, I'm literally going on an adventure. Like, I'm not in a theme park anymore. I'm going on an adventure. What I'm encountering, I've never experienced in a theme park attraction before. <laughs> it's pretty mind-blowing. I, I'll say that. And I, I couldn't not include it because it's that remarkable. Now, is yeah. it creepy? Yeah, I would say that there's some scary parts to the attraction for sure. I mean, you're, you know, the first order is coming after you pretty hard throughout most of the attractions. So <laughs> <laughs> they're not really a jolly bunch. <laughs> 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 it's funny. I, I want to talk about it, but I don't want to ruin anything cool. <laughs> Yeah, I do want to say uh, on our on our podcast network, on our theme park show, uh, Creepy Canyons, we do have a whole spoiler filled episode talking about it. If you, if someone really wants to hear more about it and can't wait to write it, <laughs> but uh, I won't I won't drop any spoilers here. No, that's fine. That's what amazing park. Well, yeah, there's there it is. I can imagine a whole host of drink and beverage and food options to oh totally wow enhance this experience as well james can't you yeah that's a whole other episode right (laughs) (laughs) but one thing i was which i didn't do at all is like what kind of lands are these attractions going into i don't i'm not really sure um, how how we're gonna break all that up 
Because uh, at first I was like, oh, maybe I should keep the, the classic Disneyland lands and then fill up the lands with my favorite attractions in those lands. But I decided to scrap that and just literally go for my favorite attractions no matter where they are. I, I, I don't know. I guess there's there's a there's a little bit of space there. Alien Encounter, Star Wars. Uh, and then there's the Castle Dragon area. So there's a little bit of Fantasyland. Uh, and uh, that's it. So it's Tomorrowland, Fantasyland, I guess. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know where else these rides would fit. <laughs> You could put pirates with the Star Wars bit and sort of have a little bit of adventure. Yeah, yeah, I'll take it. It's just, uh, it's an all creepy, fun park. And yeah, definitely a restaurant concept based on the attractions that I said here. That would be so much fun to come up with. We're all waiting for the day there's some type of Haunted Mansion restaurant. Mm -hmm. I guess the closest that we have to that currently is the West Wing and uh, Be Our Guest. It's a little uh, spooky and haunted mansion esque, <laughs> but yeah, that'd be fun too. Yeah, a lot of lot of fun specialty food items. Yeah, we're gonna have a great time. You guys are uh, you guys get lifetime passes to my park. Oh, so, oh come, thanks. So come on down. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, will do. I'm, I'm booking the plane ticket right now for about twenty years time for when we've fully reached up our GoFundMe of about the ten billion pounds it's gonna need to buy this. <laughs> Yeah, well, anyone that contributes gets a lifetime pass, too. So any listener out there that wants to contribute to this GoFundMe, <laughs> any, any, any amount, any amount of money, you'll get a lifetime pass. So come on down. Let's make this a reality. <laughs> Did you have a lot of fun putting this to de- together, James? Because from the sound of it, it, you've really sat and thought about it in a, a lot of detail to get it down to the 10. I did. I definitely I had a blast doing this because I had fun just going through all the attractions that ever existed and, and, and thinking what what would be if I could make my own park. And um, do you mind if I throw just a few honorable mentions out? Because I just really go on. Then. I just I just it's it's I just feel like it's important. I really wanted to include, uh, you know, Terry Harden's dragon. You know, um, but I figured we could only have one dragon attraction if I out of the ten slots, so I went with the uh, the dragon tower. So shout out to uh, to Terry Harden and her amazing dragon in Disneyland Paris. But I figured if I'm gonna if I'm gonna encounter a dragon, I'd rather encounter one that's gonna try to attack me, not one that's sleeping. If I had to choose, <laughs> so I went with that one. I also wanted to bring back the original journey into the imagination with Sigmund and Dreamfinder. Oh yeah, Maelstrom as well. For the classic Epcot mm. attractions, I re- and the last thing I'll mention here is a real, real deep cut. Most people have never even heard of this. <laughs> probably have no idea what I'm talking about. I think it was only open for probably six months or a year. But there's uh, the film uh, Babes in Toyland. Have you guys ever seen this movie? Yeah. Mm, no. It's very uh, psychologically trippy and weird, creepy uh, Disney film that's live action. Uh, they encounter some very uh, bizarre creatures along their journey somehow it's also a christmas movie it's it's really out there right after the film opened they actually had a walk through experience where you could go through this creepy forest with these demented trees with faces <laughs> it was one of the earliest versions of uh of, of what would be like walking through like a haunted uh, attraction or anything nobody jumped out and scared you or anything but this was in the in the mid 60s Right after the movie came out, it was where uh, Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln currently is. It was the first attraction that was in that space. And uh, I would have loved to bring that back, but I just I didn't, I didn't have room. So. <laughs> so, yeah, those are my honorable mentions. James, loving it. Absolutely. Jane, any final thoughts for James's theme park? I, I just w- want it being built, really. That's, that's oh. my only <laughs> final thoughts, you know, because uh, I think this could be Disneyland James Phase 1. And then we could build yeah. up and we could add in all the all the extra bits, couldn't we, afterwards, you know? I mean, I, I literally have 13 other attractions ready to go. There you so, go, you uh, see. <laughs> uh, James's California Adventure right next door and we'll be... <laughs> <laughs> and Jane, if James is going to give us a, a free lifetime pass, it means you finally will have to go on the Tower of Terror because he insists that you do use your pass to the best advantage. That's right. <laughs> And I think, I think to be fair, Michelle, after what we're going through at the moment, it, I'll be on that ride as damn quick as I can get there. <laughs> You'll never take Tower of Terror for granted ever again, James. No, <laughs> never again. <laughs> well, James, it's been a lot of fun chatting through this. Why don't you give yourself a bit of a shout out where people can find more from you? Sure. So, yeah, I'm from uh, Creepy Kingdom is Dead, and we do uh, 
whole bunch of fun stuff over there. It's focusing on creepy stuff. Clearly, mostly Disney, but uh, you uh, Universal, Harry Potter, a whole bunch of spooky fun stuff. We have uh, a YouTube channel where, where we have fun vlogs. We have tons of articles or review movies and stuff like that. And of course, where it all started with podcasts. We have a podcast network where we have a few different shows. Our flagship show, I guess I would say, would be the Dark Theme Park show where we talk about theme park stuff. We actually just launched a show about evil dark side of Harry Potter called Wicked Wizardry. So uh, we're just having a whole bunch of fun there. And you can find all that stuff at creepykingdom.com on every social media under Creepy Kingdom. I also want to say thank you guys for inviting me back on the show. Uh, you guys were some of the first guests ever on Creepy Kingdom back in 2013 or 14. I don't know <laughs> back then, and it's it's been uh, it's been fun, uh, you know, covering all this stuff with you guys over the years and uh, just sharing our love for the theme parks. Oh, bless you, lovely. And at some point, we are going to have to do a special show reviewing Aidan Sinclair and the amazing show we saw together over at Christmas. Oh, yes. Uh, when Michelle was out here, I took her to the Queen Mary to uh, see a very spooky show, <laughs> to say the mm. least. <laughs> uh, some encounter with some real paranormal uh, activity there. Ooh. I would love to uh, come back and talk about that your experiences there wonderful well let's round off this week's show you can find us on anywhere and everywhere under disney dream girls instagram and twitter at dis dream girls you can find more shows from the disney dream girls exclusive over on disney dream girls page on patreon and we will be back next week so it's a goodbye from me bye from me goodbye from me this podcast is part of the After Dark Podcast Network.